At this juncture, we would like to call in our dear junior high school department head, Ms. Trinidad D. Cabaliza, to introduce to us our distinguished guest of honor and speaker for this event. Ms. Vilia A. Engilio, head of the administration and finance. Mr. Jason A. Ias, our school principal. Ms. Jill Del Rosario Gardose, the cultural attache of the Philippine Embassy. The PTA officers, department heads, faculty members, administrative staff, parents, guests, and completers, good afternoon. I cannot help but let you know all of what I have, what I know about our guest speaker. Our guest speaker is a native of Bicol, of course, in the Philippines. He is an accreditation and quality assurance expert and currently working as a senior business development manager of Qatar Care, the oldest Qatar Council for Healthcare practitioners, a licensed medical and nursing healthcare provider in Doha. He was a faculty member of Qatar University and at the same time, the quality assurance coordinator of the College of Arts and Sciences for seven years. He has been in the academy for 25 years, since 2006, from the Philippines, Bahrain, Oman, and Qatar. He earned the following academic degrees. Bachelor of Arts degree, major in political science, cum laude. Master of Arts in Public Administration, Bachelor of Laws, and a PhD in Public Administration. He was awarded with a postgraduate ambassadorial scholarship in Brazil, and that was in 2006. He is short of two dissertations to complete his additional doctorate degrees in business administration and development education. He acquired certificate at the Edinburgh University, Manchester in Scotland on SAP, IT Solution on Enterprise Resource Planning and Project Management at Qatar University. He is a UK high field trainer and a realtor as well. In 2008, he worked as head of the Department of International Studies, Associate Dean of the College of Administrative and Financial Sciences, Graduate Studies, and later headed the Quality Assurance and Accreditation Office of AMA International University in Bahrain for four years. Moreover, he also taught in all levels of education from elementary to advanced education and conducted numerous teacher training courses back in the Philippines at the University of Santo Tomas and San Juan de Letran Graduate School. He was also actively involved in research projects and published manuals for teaching and learning. Head of Department's Handbook for Qatar, Qatar University, benchmarking procedure, and graduate research preparations. In Qatar University, he assisted international accreditation of seven academic programs. He had written degree curricula on fine arts, criminology, forensic sciences, and communication disorders. He also drafted 150 core syllabi in fine arts and international studies. In Oman, he successfully acquired accreditation from the ASIC UK accreditation for a mass communication college during his six months engagement. During his free time, he engages himself in professional academic 
consultancies, and other professional advising services. This prodded him to establish his own consultancy company in the Philippines, where he is the co-founder and chief executive officer of AW1 Consultancy Company, serving both private, private and public entities in the Philippines. In the corporate world, he is the regional sales trainer for Mega World International, where he is at the same time a bulk investor. He believes that knowledge is nothing if you don't excel in monetizing it for yourself and others. Our speaker is a member of the International Network for Quality Assurance for Higher Education, an influencer who traveled to 35 countries only, 35 countries, a life coach, fluent in the English language, and conversant in French and Brazilian Portuguese. Ladies and gentlemen, without much ado, please, please help me welcome Dr. Alvin Bermilio Abainza with a huge round of applause. Thank you so much, um, Ma'am Trina. I hope I will be able to give justice to what uh, she said about me, although I provided her the information that she's going to tell today. First, uh, to the administration and staff of the Philippine International School, Qatar, uh, Sir Jason, congratulations. Uh, to the faculty and staff, to the parents of, I was supposed to say graduates, but they are completers. I should say. Uh, Miss Jill, our cultural attache, Mr. Wilson uh, for the PTA, uh, the PTA president and the members as well. I was with them earlier before we started. It's nice to be back again in PISQ. I think some of the parents were my audience before when I spoke during the recognition rights for two days. I don't know who, I think some of them graduated already. It was two years, I think, two years ago. Now I'm here to be in a diverse environment. I'm going to make a difference in terms of what I'm going to share. This would be for the graduates or completers and also to the parents and guests that we have. I hope I would be able to make a diverse information and share something to you. This is really an advanced uh, world now, living in a global village. Before, we used to print our speeches in pages, in bond papers, this time, we just have to copy it and put it in our mobiles. So I'm using my mobile today. I'd like to thank also Mam V, the head of the administration and finance, who would always satisfy my craving for Turon every time I would visit her office. Uh, the family and friends of the completers, guests, ladies and gentlemen, a good evening to everyone. Good evening to all of you. This is my first of the many speeches I am going to make for 2019. And I am extremely delighted that it is with the academic institution that I have been considered a family. Thank you so much. Let's give a warm of applause to PISQ, please. Thank you. To the completers, I hope you had the best year so far, because you still have one more year. So advance, happy summer vacation to everyone as well. Before I proceed with my one-hour speech, 
Just kidding. Let me congratulate the parents who have been truly supportive of their children in many aspects of their academic lives. When I was listening to speeches, to the speech of uh, the highest honor, I was remembering the time when I was also delivering mine when I was younger. Uh, I'm 44 years old now, so it's been a while. Uh, second, the faculty members who in one way or another have brought light up to the darkest path during this journey we call learning. And lastly, of course, for the PISQ, for the out uh, astounding things that they have provided to the, our completers today, and for bringing in the three E's in the sanctuary of learning. What are these three E's? Energy, enthusiasm, and empathy. One of the great challenges faced by most academic institutions today is to ensure that all aspects of education are united amidst diversity. Living in a global village propels schools and colleges to compete over quality over quantity and value over volume. It is in this direction that schools would want to acquire the highest level of accreditation and recognition. It is through these that we achieve unity and diversity or diversity, depending on what language you're using, either American or English, British English. It would, it would be diversity if it would be American, then it would be diversity if it would be Harry Potter. <laughs> and with this, there are two sets of inspiration I would like to share with you. One is for our business today, and the other one is for our self-motivation after you have received and conferred your completion. I would like to begin with a statement that beneath all of the humor, the British would say, beneath of all the humor are some important life lessons about taking risks. So success and failure and overcoming fear. Some of the best takeaways for the completers that I can emphasize are the following. Listen carefully. You cannot succeed without the risk of failure. You cannot have a voice without the risk of criticism. So I'd like to tell everyone that, uh, for the teachers as well, let's teach, and for the parents, let us teach our children, our kids, not only to be, not only to be offensive, not to be offensive, but also not to be offended. Let's not just focus on teaching them not to be offensive, but not to be offended. In other words, do not be oversensitive. Earlier, while we were giving the certificate, Mr. Jason and I were talking about our time, because he's only two years ahead of me, <laughs> that bullying has been there long time ago. And gladly and fortunately, we are strong enough to be not offended of bullying during that time. Siguro naman makikita nyo naman sa height namin. Pwede kami binabato-bato lang nung panahon <laughs> sa liit naming dalawa. When we were giving the certificates earlier, I was telling Mr. Jason, they are giants. And when I graduated from high school, I was the tiniest, I suppose, receiving my diploma on stage. In fact, if you're going to look at the pictures I had, you would never see me on stage. I was so tiny. So that was the thing that we were talking. So learn not only not to be offensive, but not to be offended. 
I would like to recommend another one. You don't have to be fearless. Just don't let fear stop you. Don't say that you are fearless, but let not fear stop you from doing what you want. I would like to recommend a few things that I think anyone who are in search for a positive outlook in life can stand to be reminded of. This would include our guest and audience with us tonight. Number one, find the smartest people you can and surround yourself with them. Find allies rather than adorers. Don't trust Facebook likes. Some of them were accidentally clicked. <laughs> True or not? True. Find the courage to do things you are not ready to do. Keep quality friends, quality over quantity rules. Find places where you are comfortable. By being comfortable in your environment, you're freed of your insecurities and the things that hold you back, but don't need to. Power comes through sharing information. Don't tell everyone everything you plan to do. Show them results. The lesser negativity, the better for you to plan your moves. And I always quote my favorite philosopher, Sun Chu, in his Art of War and Management. With all the promising things that you have acquired all throughout your academic years in this wonderful institution, at the end of the day, what matters most is how you would be able to put your knowledge to good use and how you would be able to maximize your potential to the benefit of your own self and the community you represent. Remember that any knowledge acquired will be useless unless you employ them in your daily lives. Because otherwise, it is not only a waste of your time, but also money and effort in the process. Make the most of what you learn from your teachers Create a platform where it can be used fully, where people will learn from them. Take this opportunity to personally thank your mentors and your parents for giving you what you deserve and what they deserve. Leave behind those nagging you get from your parents and teachers. You will absolutely appreciate them later in life. Trust me you'll absolutely value them later on. The world is becoming competitive each day. In 2025, there will be five million jobs that will be lost to automation. So, you can imagine the jobs that will be created today and onwards. And this is a challenge for the junior high for the completers to be able to prepare themselves in the future as well. So the question is, have you prepared yourselves enough to meet these pressing demands mentally and emotionally? Have you asked yourselves regarding your X factor? Do you have your edge and what is your edge? Your edge among the rest. If I am your employer and soon you're going to apply for a job, if you're all graduates of engineering or if you're all graduates of nursing, you are in the same degree. I will look for someone who has an edge. Because if you do, and you know all the things that you have, your strength, then you can confidently say that you are ready to face the challenges of the next level that you ought to be in. Now, here's the second part. Before complaining about things you don't have, kindly take a moment to thank God and the universe for the gift of life that you have today. For the things you have already have 
that others are still struggling in getting them or may never get in this journey we call life. Your present situation is another person's prayer point and heart's desire in life. What you currently have is just but a dream for others. Life is a matter of perspective. What is normal to a spider is but chaos to a fly. Do you agree? Never laugh at someone's misery. What is a disaster to him may be funny for you. But for those who are in misery, try to look at it from a different view. Things that matter to you now may not matter in the future. So don't over-emote on your drama. Sometimes your pain will become source of your happiness. So emotions pass by, so don't be so sensitive and learn not to be offended. Take hardships as part of your process, the same as a diamond being subjected to stress to become the most precious gem. You might be deceived by your own emotions, so never decide when you are happy nor even when you're sad. The same applies when you are doing your homework. Your tears won't be able to comply with what your teacher is requiring, so stop crying, do your homework. Be happy and keep the fire burning like an open forest fire. In the Avengers and games, I'm not going to spoil it, it has mentioned that the world has changed and none of us can go back. All we can do is our best, is do our best. And sometimes the best that we can do is to start over. It doesn't mean that you have to start over, but you can start something for the better. So begin with an end and begin anew. For those who are still in the process of finding themselves, always remember what Tony Stark said. It is not about how much we lost, it's about how much we have left. Again, congratulations. Thank you and have a wonderful evening, everyone. Thank you so much, Dr. Abayinza. Before we proceed, we would like to take this opportunity to give our simple yet meaningful token of appreciation and certificate to our distinguished guest of honor and speaker. No word can be as tantamount as our gratitude for your presence in our event here today. So without further ado, may we request our school principal, Mr. Jason A. Iyas, and our junior high school department head, Ms. Trinidad D. Cabaliza, to give the certificate and the token of appreciation to, to Dr. Albin B. Abanza. Let me read to you the content of the certificate. Philippine International School, Qatar. This certificate of appreciation is given to Dr. Alvin B. Abainza for his invaluable contribution as keynote speaker to the fourth junior high school completion ceremony with the theme, Unity in Diversity, Quality Education for All, held on the 26th of April, 2019 at Qatar National Convention Center, signed by our principal, Jason AES. Once again, let's give a warm round of applause to our keynote.